talking about podcasts. We're talking about any minute podcast. Podcast. Merry mini Monday, chunkies. I'm Carter. This one, this voice, the middle one, is Doge. And coming in to you on the ones and twos, the threes, fours, five, six, sevens, eights, nines, no, and tens. No, leave some numbers. There's so many. It's me, Jordan. It was but one week ago that we were discussing the Marvel panel. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And we said, burp. Well, you know, just time. as we thought. They don't know. They don't know what they're doing, and they might still not. But it looks like it's. Yeah, a I'm little not bit. prepared to co-sign. Yeah, that yeah. They know what they're doing. They, we we are entering train month. Uh, yeah, here shoot, it's shoot, an international holo- It's an international time to celebrate. But two chunks is because we've got our we've got our finger on 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 everything. We understand <laughs> that we need to celebrate it Every, as well. Yeah. yeah, it is train month, and so Marvel seems a little bit more on track. I want to. Sp- into the beginning Ooh. of our episode. Nice. I tried That's to sneak good. it in. I tried That's to sneak it in. I love the words that you decided to choo choose for that sentence. <laughs> <laughs> it was an odd gust of wind beneath my wings. Why, thank you both, engineer. Um, I couldn't <laughs> think of anything. Uh, <laughs> I want to talk about what what is being called the Cargo. multiverse. <laughs> Can we just start calling each other engine? Like you know how chefs always call each other chef. Is yeah, it watch cool? The bear, is by it, the way, is it cool if we just call each other engineer? Left. Engineer, it, it's, Engin- it's a good point. Engineer, that feels point powerful. Engineer. It does. Great. It hey, does. Enge- engineer, you may continue. Or even engineer song. Yeah, <laughs> the multiverse saga. Let's talk a little bit about this, and I'm just going to go in order here of what uh, the Marvel website talks about in terms of the announcement. So there'll hmm. be some stuff yeah. that we already had had trailers for, some th- stuff that we have already discussed a little bit, but we got a new trailer for She-Hulk, Attorney at Law. I'm not sure if y'all watched it. I did. Uh, I, I did. did. Yeah. And I'm still, I'm I'm excited. I think it's yeah. going to be fun. I think she looks better. Yeah. Because 100%. we, because Bruce looks just like he's been looking, <clears throat> excuse me. Bruce looks like dead on from all of his Ragnarok days. Yeah. So, it looks good. It looks hilarious. And they're calling this, they're calling this August 17th release, I believe, a part of the multiverse saga. So this is like huh. their official new face. It's what I'm understanding from the website. It might not be the case regardless. I think it'll be fun. I love the cast. Uh, got a little daredevil in that. Somebody got their daredevil in my She-Hulk. Yeah. Looks like, true. A, looks like a brown Looking and like yellow, yellow suit. suit. Yeah. yeah. That's what we got with our two little sticks, yeah? Yeah. At the end, we don't see the face. Uh-huh. He's about to but play you know some funny? drums, dude. It's going to be Neither crazy. Neither does he. <laughs> uh, that's a good point. Um, oh, awful. yeah. Oh, I get awful it. Yeah. Yeah. Secret Invasion. Samuel L. Jackson, Ben Mendelsohn reprised their roles as Nick Fury and Talos. So Secret Invasion, that's a Disney Plus. Yeah. Disney Plus release. Uh, as you want to chime in, feel free to. One of the bigger announcements about Ant-Man and the Wasp that became official during Comic-Con was Ant-Fam is back, but Kang, like they, they're saying legitimately Kang is in. Did you just refer to them as the Ant Fam? Yeah. That's amazing. Yeah. Was that you? That, was that OG that, from you? No, that's from the website. Oh, man. Sorry, I can't take that, uh, man. No. But that is Kang. So that's a February, in theaters, February 17th, 2023. We see that 2023 feel like it's far off. Nah, y'all, we're nah, already past halfway six through months. 2022. That's not far off at all. Super excited for that. Uh, so to have Kang show back up in February, how does that make y'all feel? Because he's been one of the biggest WTF. Like, where is he it since makes me, Loki? Yeah, I was about to say, it makes me feel like, well, where has he been doing since summer 2020 when Loki came out? Yeah. Summer 2021 when Loki came out. Yeah. Same. Yeah. And I've got a conversation too that I, let's go ahead and spend some time on it now in the midst of all of this. Do we feel like logistics could screw up the MCU? like the outside logistics of contracts. Because they, I think we got so spoiled with the Infinity Saga after they really got going, you know, after we had stones introduced and whatnot. And then the end was so good that it helped us forget Dark World and different things like yeah. that. But overall, just so tight and so, you know, well-marketed and put out there. Do we feel like that has spoiled us because everybody was just signed on and they had them? I, we, we've got people on these long contracts still, but it feels like they're just making exception 
for the calendar, like literally so that people can be right. available. Do y'all feel that at all? I think we're the, like kind of the, the gap that we're seeing in Marvel connectivity is partially due, I think, just to the logistics of like the movies that would be coming out now would have had to be filming in 2020. Mm-hmm. Uh, and so just the, I think the legit, that's why we're getting things like, that's why, I mean, we're doing a series and one of the movies in this series is Bullet Train, which is like, that's being pushed as kind of like, go to the theater, see Bullet Train. And like, probably pre-pandemic, I don't know that that would have been a go to the theater, theater see Bullet Train from the studios. Because it's this kind of just, it's a lower budget kind of action thriller. And I think those... I don't know, the the kind of box office has had to shift a little bit away from the big superhero spectacle stuff yeah. due to the pandemic. And yeah. so I wonder how much of that is like, well, yeah, Multiverse of Madness didn't really connect to anything, but that's because they were all there <laughs> yeah. on a green screen taking COVID tests every morning. I yeah. wonder if we'll look at phase four and be like, you know what, they're lucky they didn't just completely stumble. Yeah. Because it maybe we're getting our footing back. I think we're going to look at phase four and say, I mean... Yeah, free pass because of COVID, but I think we're going to look at phase four and say, no, it was a stumble. It absolutely was a stumble. It was okay. coming off the hottest thing they've ever done, and it's this lukewarm sort of give up of a phase to just give yeah. something to the theater. Like, that. that's what this whole, this whole phase, minus a couple shining moments, has just felt like they said, we got to keep putting stuff out or else people are going to forget about Marvel, so just push yeah. it even if it's half-baked. Do you yeah. feel like taking a break would have been better? Like Endgame yeah. comes out in 2019 and then no in, Marvel in 2020 or 2021? In retrospect, uh, yeah. I mean, I, don't get me wrong. I love I, I love getting new Marvel stuff as much as yeah. the next person, but the dip in how much I care mm. is insane. Like, never And this is the logistics it. thing though, right? This is the logistics argument because it would be better for us but about $5 billion says to Marvel Studios and Disney, <laughs> right, sure. no. Yeah, absolutely. Right. We absolutely will do this. No, I, I think what they're going to start facing more than ever before is as they get bigger, yes, of course it's Marvel. So they're going to still have that draw where people want to be part of it. But yeah. as they start reaching for bigger and bigger names, with big names comes other responsibilities. Yeah. So as yep. they start reaching for more of these like top tier A-list actors, well, guess what? They got other stuff they got to go do and they still want to be in those Oscar movies. Oh, yeah. yeah. And also too, I mean, the the streaming budget is about the same as a blockbuster movie now. Because it's like if, if the difference is between, you know, some spinoff for Game of Thrones and jumping into two or three Marvel movies, that's kind of a harder decision than it yeah. used to be, it feels like. Mm-hmm. I mean, look because at Wings of Power. One of those might be- of Power still- the highest budget for a show of all time right now? Yeah. I mean, it's because somebody Jesus asked went to you to space, be, he grabbed all the money that was in space and space brought it back money. down. Yeah, I did yeah. read about that. But if you're, if you you're an actor and Amazon says, come be in the biggest show ever made or a Marvel movie, two years ago, you probably would have had a harder time. But now after watching the last phase, if I'm an actor, I'm going, well, what's this Amazon show going to be like? Right. Yep. So I hope I hope they don't shoot themselves too hard in the foot, but yeah, like you said, five bill says uh, they're probably going to be a okay. Yeah, yeah, and I think I, I'll, I'll you know spoiler seeing phase five and a touch of phase phase six. Well, a lot of phase six really. Uh, I have more hope. It, it feels like there's more guidance here, but regardless, there are so, still some red flags in the roadmap that they laid out to me at yeah. least that are like a little yeah. ooh, I don't know about that, but we'll see. You know. Hopefully I'm wrong. Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3. Yeah. May 5th. May 5th. Coming through May 5th, 2023. I'm, I'm excited about that. The Guardians are a crew that they've done a really good job of still having us keep up with them via other movies. To an extent. Yeah. I, was, I, I look at 3 and kind of am a little bit surprised that it's just the third Guardians movie. Right. But... Yeah, I think that's a good thing. That's valid. Listen, Black Panther. So Wakanda Forever. Oh, my we got a goodness. full trailer for November eleventh, twenty twenty two. Guys, this could. I don't even know if it's like a stretch to be like this could be the highest grossing film that 
the MCU's ever had. Is that that doesn't feel crazy, does it? No, this looks like oh this is the best goodness. trailer I've maybe ever seen. This is like, yes, fantastic. It, it beat out the old first place trailer, which was the OG Black Panther trailer, yeah, which was the yeah. best trailer they had ever made for the MCU. And now yeah. this trailer is insane. Made me emotional in this trailer. Yeah. It was it was it was phenomenal. Kugler's great. They have yeah. I mean everybody that's in here is great. Not to mention like I mean, we're underwater. Like, it's Namor, yeah? Like, yeah. we have... Tina Huerta in another, as Namor looks incredible. Mm-hmm. We're bringing in a design. new... This is a... I, I tried to do some Namor research. He's been back and forth. But ultimately, villain, right, is what we're assuming? Mostly just kind of a douche. Like, yeah. he's, he's yeah. sort of his own guy. Big fan favorite, though. Yeah. And so, I think For a long time, a it was unclear who the movie rights about. belonged to. Uh, the movie rights were sold, I believe, to Universal at the same time as the Hulk. And they tried unsuccessfully mm-hmm. to get a movie off the ground. And then it kind of waffled back and forth. And I remember even as early as like uh, phase two, I guess, there was rumors of like, does Atlantis belong to Marvel or does it belong to Universal? Nobody was really ever sure. Interesting. And I think nobody was really 100% sure until we got confirmation of Tina Cuerta <laughs> playing the role in Black Panther Wakanda Forever. Like, oh, I guess he belongs to the MCU. Yeah. Yeah. What a what a massive announcement that trailer was. Yeah. A lot of rumors it, about Doctor Doom. Yep. That's yeah. what I was I was referring to that a couple of weeks ago on the show. Yeah. Enormous rumors that uh basically in in my mind it seems as though uh both Doctor Doom and uh Namor, Namor, I've never ever said it out loud before. I've only read it in comic books. Uh it seems as though they're gonna try and take control of Wakanda like a power vacuum. Yeah. Mm. yeah. It's exciting. The movie looks massive. Yeah. Uh, and I absolutely, I, I cannot wait. Shuri is, I got a feeling that the clause that we saw at the end is Shuri in a uh, suit. In a Black Panther um, suit. Yeah. And I'm buzzing. I wonder if- clear up whatever weirdness was there with Letitia Wright? Uh, kind of buried it, actually. They never really said anything about that. Okay, I don't even remember what happened. I just know that there was some weirdness there She going was, like, on. pretty militantly anti-COVID safety measures on set mm, for the movie. Got it. She was like, I'm not doing that, which is yeah. uh, stupid. Not a good decision. Yeah, bad. Uh, I wonder, bad though, decision. if that, if that like, claw reveal uh, is a misdirect from her, if we're going to end up with everybody in Black Panther suits and saying, cool. we are the Black Panther... Whoa. Whoa. Let me get over these goosebumps. How cool would that be? How cool would that be? Every single, like all of our main cast. Holy moly. Um, Adam, our sound wizard, will love this next announcement. Echo is uh, coming out summer of 2023. That's only for him. That's a special thing that the Chunkies don't even get to know what the connection is. It's only for him because we love him. Uh, But Maya Lopez is back. Uh, for Echo, I'm guessing we're going to get some more of um, our Hell's Kitchen crew. Yeah, Charlie Cox and uh, Vincent D'Onofrio are both signed on for that. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I, they got a little bit of cleaning up to do after the Hawkeye finale. It was a little bit messy, uh, if we remember yeah. that. Uh, hey, so, I'll, I'll tell you this. We we also got the announcement. Just uh, Sorry to jump ahead of you if you're going here, but we did get the announcement that Daredevil Born Again is coming, a season four of Daredevil. And I'm going to be honest— if it is Disney Plus quality instead of the quality of the three season Netflix show, which is like a perfect superhero show, I'm I'm genuinely going to be really really upset, like really disappointed. Yeah, okay. Up, upset is strong. That sounds like I'm going to throw a tantrum. I'm, <laughs> I'm going to write a dis- I'm going to write a strongly worded <laughs> letter yeah. to Walt Disney's grandkids. Find the hands. No, I I just <laughs> think I just think Disney Plus is so. By and large, like for the most part, overwhelmingly, it is like Disney Channel original movies for people yeah. who like Marvel. For the most part, that's what's happening here. Yeah. But the Daredevil show was like, I let's yeah. go nominate people for Emmys. This show is so good. Yeah, yeah. And I'm, I I'm optimistic as I always am because I think there's a lot of things that they that Marvel has done in general because. Marvel as a whole, as canon, has so many things that people are hoping we catch some of that good magic. And I think they do that more often than not with a lot of things. Mm. We, you know, to get the 1997 riff at the end of Miss Marvel of like, that's clearly saying like, hey, we get it. Yeah. That cartoon meant a lot to you. Like I hope, and the fact that they're calling it season four. Um, yeah. Like I really, I really, I have a good feeling that they're going to try and stay 
true to that. And and because they recognize that that's a good thing. I think I would have been more scared if the Daredevil announcement was two phases ago. You know, I yeah. think sure. the fact that they've had some time to marinate in it gave us a little bit of tease. In no I don't know, home. man. I feel like I feel like there's a world in which the first show, like in, w- in which we did WandaVision first, but then immediately jumped into something like She-Hulk where it's like, hey, we're bringing back Daredevil. Just like something to to give it a little momentum because we yeah. finished, we followed up uh, WandaVision with like the most law and order SVU <laughs> Marvel, st- the Falcon winter soldier stuff. Yeah. It's just like, man, MCU's there's just blue bloods. Exactly. MCU bloods. Blue bloods. And I'm just hoping that this Miss Marvel is more, uh, <sighs> not like, f- I'm trying to think, like Franklin that, and Bash. Is that like a law show that's like about the same are you quality talking about, as like a Blue Bloods? Are you talking about I'm She-Hulk? Sorry. Yes, I'm talking about She-Hulk. Yeah. Like I'm hoping that it's not Franklin and Bash, like a lawyer Some show Rizzoli that my Isles. mom would watch. I love yeah. you so much, mom. She doesn't actually watch that. <laughs> she has really good taste. But yeah, I, I just, I don't know, man. I, I'm not trying to be a downer. I'm really not. I mean, I hope yeah. everybody who's listened before I think it's realistic. that the MCU yeah, I think is a big deal to me, but like- Legitimate fear. I would say yeah. that by and large, at this point, looking back with a little bit of retrospect here, I would call, in my opinion, for my tastes and the expectations that the MCU has set for quality and continuity, I would call the Disney Plus shows an overwhelming failure to me. And I would call phase four an overwhelming failure to me. Both have some bright spots, but I would say that the bulk of both the Disney Plus shows and phase four in general, I have left and gone, that's not what I hoped for. It's because... I don't know, man. I think they're they're a little bit controlling for we want people to have time to watch the Disney Plus shows, you know, uh, because I think they I think Disney as a company probably got negative backlash from Grogu introducing force healing to Star Wars on Thursday or on Wednesday, and then that Thursday Rise of Skywalker came out and force healing was a major plot point, and I think they might have learned the wrong lesson from that because it took over a year for Wanda's kids to show up in a movie. Uh, and we introduced Kang last summer and he's not going to be in a movie until next February. And so I wonder if yeah. they're like, control, like we want to give everybody time to watch this and time to get okay with this stuff. You know what I mean? Because those yeah, are maybe, the things maybe. that I wanted and that's the interconnectivity that I expected. And I expected to finish WandaVision. Uh, and then like the next time I went to the theater, be like, okay, I know what's up with Wanda. Show me Wanda. What's she doing right, right now? You know what right. I mean? And I, yeah. we're just not getting that like we used to. Yeah, yeah. That's true. What we're getting that like we normally do though, what we're used to is ads and we're going to do that right now Mm. and keep talking the multiverse saga upon our return. Drivers who switch and save with Progressive save over $700 on average and those savings add up. Imagine what you could buy in the future. Hey, remember how 20 years ago I switched to Progressive? Well, now it's the future and I used all those savings to buy this new hologram phone because, you know, it's the future and everything is holograms now. So switch to Progressive and save big because those savings can add up in the future. Progressive Casualty Insurance Company and Affiliates. National annual average insurance savings by new customer surveyed who saved with Progressive in 2020. Potential savings will vary. Okay, so we're about halfway through the episode. We're about halfway through those announcements. If we've got time for a game at the end, that's fine. But this is fine. I think this is good combo. I think this is uh, maybe what the people want. Loki Season 2 is official. Yes, good. thumbs up. Um, that was, we got to the end of that. I remember us getting to the end of that. That was something that accompanied our uh, our mini Monday podcast, and us saying like, "This is the first one that felt like there will be." Like it, it did yeah. feel like there was going to be a sequel. It's very nice to see that they're following through and that it's going to be uh, next summer. Super excited for that. Um, That's the first one that felt like it was structured like a television show. Yeah, in terms yep. of like, I just finished. Uh, Severance, and then thinking back to like other other shows that are built around a central mystery of like, wait, what is exactly going on? And to right. me, I think that like Loki is the only show that felt like it fit in with things that are not also on Disney Plus. Yeah, I think I think Loki. I don't think it's crazy to say that Loki's probably the best of the Disney Plus shows so far. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, it's not a tough argument. So so far, our our uh, two twenty 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 three. So next year is Secret Invasion. Quantum Media, Guardians of the Galaxy three, Echo, Loki season two, Blade, November third, twenty twenty three. Is that a movie Just or a the, show? That's a movie. Movie. 
Yeah, that's a movie. Mahershala, Mahershala Ali. I'm guarantee I'm, Kit Harrington from Eternals is back in that too. Yeah. Um, so very in that yeah. all we have, all we have is the title. We're starting to get into where we're just gonna have how it looks, I yeah, guess, what like the title the looks like from the logo. I mean, those Hall um, H pictures of a screen with the phases drawn out have been a big deal for like a decade at this point. So I, I'm all yeah. into looking and going, ooh, that logo looks nice. Sure. That, yeah. you know, but you really can't pay attention to the date underneath the logo no, because they change never. all the time. Yep. Another 2023 is Ironheart. Yep. Uh, that's going to be Rai Rai Williams. It's Rai Rai. Rai Rai, right? Not Riri. Uh, I have never also said There's that no out loud. Uh, I'm not sure. She's, she's also in Black Panther, Wakanda Forever. Yeah, she's in the trailer. Is this a yep. movie? This is. Or a Disney Plus Disney show. Disney Plus show. It's a show. Okay. But she's introduced in the movie this fall. Okay. Another. So winter 2023, another show. Agatha and the Co... Is it Coven or Coven? Coven. Coven, Coven of Agatha Chaos. Agatha and the Coven of Chaos. Yeah. So excited about that. That's the, that's the Agatha show. They changed the name of it. It used to be called House of Harkness, which was bad. And Coven of Chaos is slightly less bad. I like Coven yeah. of Chaos. I think that's nice. It sounds like that I would like be somebody's watching. Tumblr. It kind of fits. Yeah, but that kind, kind of, of is Agatha, Agatha though, huh? Yeah. yeah. So now we're getting into 2024. I and Jordan, the Tumblr. Daredevil Born Again, 2024. Yep. 18 uh, episodes. Did you yeah, see they're that? Saying, Whoa. That's yeah. a lot, yeah. They're saying spring. Wow, now they're, they're all they're all quibbies. So it's yeah, only going to be eight minutes quibbies. long. Yeah. It's going to be fifty total <laughs> minutes of Daredevil. Uh, May third, Captain America: New World Order. Okay, yeah, we'll see. Cool. We'll see. Uh, July twenty. I ahead. think Doctor Doom's going to be uh, could be the Gotta main be. villain. Of yeah, that. I would imagine that. Gotta be. Or maybe Flag Smashers again. Maybe they're like, not enough people watched Falcon and Winter Soldier on Disney Plus. Let's do Flag Smashers again. Another Let's movie. Sympathetic terrorists. Continue. <laughs> July 26th, 2024, Thunderbolts yep. confirmed happening in July. Very excited for that. And then here's one of the biggest announcements from Comic-Con. November 8th, they have the date on there for 2024, Fantastic Four. Yep. The Marvel's first family will be coming. I'm guessing we have a good idea of maybe one of these for who is playing them in he one of the other movies, right? still has not confirmed. No. Nah. I don't think Krasinski's in. The latest rumor I read is- No, no, no. I'm saying in one of the new movies. Oh, 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 oh. I'm not saying that he's confirmed. Not at all. I think he is not going to be Reed. I'm just saying, I feel like- Uh, He's doing some press right now that makes me think he's going to be Reed. I'm just saying, I feel like November 8th, I don't think that trailer drops for this movie and then we know who is playing everybody. I bet we're going to know one or two of these characters in one of the other movies. Don't you think? I, I actually read a rumor the other day from a somewhat reputable- Rumor mill. Uh, and I can tell you the next time. I I can guess. I could put my thumb on the scale a little bit and guess the next, the, the Fantastic Four character we're going to see first and where we're going to see them, who's playing them. Do you want this or do you want to go in blind? This is why we're here. No. Tell me. You want to know? Jordan, you want to know? I don't care. It's the probably rumor, not true anyway. <laughs> uh, the rumor that I read is uh, Jason Siegel as Ben Grimm, the yeah, thing. Yeah, that's great. That's an is excellent gonna be, guess is going to be a client of Jennifer Walters and She-Hulk, oh, attorney at what law. What an incredible what, casting dude? decision. What Isn't an incredible that great? casting decision. Oh. Jason, Siegel. Jason Siegel as Ben Grimm is so, so good. Now he actually gets to be so big. Yeah. It's part of the trio of Jasons, the holy trinity of Jasons. It's any of the Jasons. Siegel, Bateman, wow. Sudeikis, never sad if they're cast in something. Correct, yeah. Still think, I still think my money's on John Krasinski as Reed. Dude. Really Man, do. that's that's such a like. I don't it think so. Feels like I think the they forefather would face of the MCU backlash. of these kinds of castings, these Siegel type castings. The forefather is Rudd. The moment Rudd got to play, yeah, sure, for sure, for sure. Like when Paul Rudd got to be like taken seriously, yep. it was like, oh, oh okay, yeah, cool. Dude, no. man. Those to to address what what you're saying, I think there's no way they dangle Krasinski and pull it back. I think the it's rumor is that they're for sure. the rumor is that they're looking at actors in their late thirties. Uh, for Sue and Reed. I think and then somebody closer director. to Tom Holland's age for Johnny. That I buy for sure, but I think it's a misdirect. Um, I think I think it's John Krasinski all day. I definitely don't. Uh, rumors are that Spider-Man will be, the next time we see Spider-Man uh, will probably be in the Fantastic Four movie. 
Tom Holland is reportedly going to be in that one. But there's also a bunch of empty slots on the calendar that they're saving for the D23 presentation this fall. Uh, and so I think they're saving, like there's a February slot. Marvel's reserved a couple slots. I think they're saving a Deadpool 3 announcement for D23. and, and Come on. A couple of other things, probably. Some sort of Love X-Men it. announcement, probably. Love it. May 2nd, 2025. Avengers. Another Avengers movie. Is here finally the Kang Dynasty. These these dates are just might as well just be pretend. Yeah, sure. <laughs> it might as well it, 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 it might as well just say it's coming out on on Grieve Twenty Florps, <laughs> <laughs> November seventh, twenty twenty five, and and it's it's worth bringing up too that it is going to be a they want to release uh, basically a two parter again like what they yeah. did the Infinity Saga uh, within the same. Is that what that year. is that what that is like a part one part two or is it more like a uh, two separate teams of Avengers doing two different Avengers movies? Ooh. But doesn't that still feel like a part one, part two? I don't know if we have to. Like, I don't know if, they, say it on the if they're connected. You know, like that's what I'm it's saying. Like, What's the other one called? Kang Dynasty, and what else? This one's Kang Dynasty, and then the other one is Secret Wars. Yeah, so it the, could be that here's our cosmic battle. Here's our. That's Earth what battle. it feels like. Well, to me, Secret is that Wars to do two different things. Secret Wars, I think, is going to be a reboot. Like it's going to end with a reboot, uh, a clearing of the status quo, because that's the comic event. The most re- recent Secret Wars was. 2015, I think. There might have been one since then. But I think the one they're going to adapt is multiverses, uh, universes basically uh, having incursions on each other like we saw in Doctor Strange, Multiverse of Madness. Uh, And it's going to be basically kind of a patchwork universe made of different pieces of the universes that are crashing into each other and colliding into each other. In the comics, Doctor Doom decides, you know what, I should be in charge of, it's called Battle World, uh, which is like, you know what, I should be in charge of this. Um, but I think it's, I run Barter Town. I, I think it's going to be like a, uh, I think it's going to end with a, sort of a reboot of like we're combining all the pieces of this into a new universe, and in this universe, you know, so and so never died, and so and so was never born. It's going to be kind of like starting over. I am exhausted and disappointed in that. In my sentence or in that idea, I can try and in say it better. Idea. Oh, okay. No, your sentence was beautiful and lovely. I thought you did an excellent Thank you. job Thank you. conveying the information. No, I am exhausted. I am preemptively exhausted and disappointed by the universal reset of everything. You know what I mean? Like, I yeah. And, and I think it's just because I'm I'm starting to lose. Fi- like, it feels a little bit. I'm starting to get those rumblings, right? Of like, man, the first five seasons of Game of Thrones were so sick. Yeah, and then it got weird, and we forgave it. Good left. Yeah, and then it's. I'm just like I'm sitting here like, man, the first, the first three phases of the MCU were so. I'm afraid those are the conversations we're going to be having. Is like, man, they really ran out of ideas after Endgame, huh? Hmm. If you were to rate all of our Comic Con announcements on the scientific cinema scale, where does it fall for you? As a whole, yeah. Mm -hmm. Let's do it as a whole. Oh. I, it's a buy it. It's a buy it for me because I think I wanted to leave with an extra dose of encouragement, and I think I got it. So yeah, I think I'll give it a rent. I think we shall see. <clears throat> yeah, I mean, stream or rent. There are some high points. Obviously, there there are some tentpole movies that I think there's almost no way they're bad. Although I've thought that does before. Wakanda forever have like. What is its influence on the future to you? If what kind of feel forever, like the end of this phase? Does this help phase four more or does it, because it's not a phase five movie. I think if Wakanda Forever to me feels like the one out of all of them that have come out since Endgame that it's like, you cannot screw this up. Yeah, I agree. And if Wakanda Forever I have no way is, home, but yeah. If Wakanda <laughs> Forever is the same quality as the majority of phase four, I'm going to be very disappointed. Yeah, and I'm, I might even lower my, Comic-Con Hall Age announcement rating and be like, I'm actually pretty uh, between less excited and apathetic somewhere on that scale about this stuff. If Wakanda Forever is not, I mean, gosh, it has to be so good, right? And we said yeah. that going into Ragnarok of like, er, into Love and Thunder, of like, this, yeah. it's unfair expectations to place on a movie to have to be good enough for this movie and also good enough for the ones that I didn't really like so much before it. Sure. So. No Way Home was phase four, yeah? Yes. So if we if we are bookended by potentially two top five Marvel movies, 
What does that do for phase four? Because I think No Way Home is in our t- is in y'all's top five. Yeah. Um, yeah. Far from probably. home started phase four. So it's just so weird. The dynamic yeah. is just so weird in general. To uh, wrap up this episode, I want to do. I want to play a quick game of Jolf because it wouldn't be us if we weren't playing some games every sure. now and then. Yeah. Uh, it's but, that, it's uh, that childlike play quality. It's a childlike play. The We're going to play one round of Jolf. So if we have one of those situations to where somebody's out on the first one. Bye. That's all she wrote. You know what I'm saying? Yes. Uh, Jolf, for those of you that uh, have not heard us play this game. Again, that's JJJ. O L F Joff is a 22 stroke allotted game in which I give them Rotten Tomatoes movies that they get to say whether or not they want to play the course of either the critics review of that or the audience review of that movie. And they only have 22 strokes to get within that percentage uh, rating. Uh, The person who survives the longest wins. We've had some games where there was one where Jordan was just hitting everything. I think we got five movies locked in before we were done with the game. Yeah. And sometimes we just get way off. This is, it's going to be tough. And there've been some where I've done good too. If you think about it. There have been. Yeah. Yeah. You've done well. You've done well. Uh, We're going to do movies that are in theaters right now. Okay. And we're going to start with DC League of Super Pets. We're doing critic scores. Yeah. Do you want to do, you can, let's, can let's play the critic score. I always like critic score better. Okay. We're playing the critic score game. Who would like to go for all? I'll go. To DC League of Super Pets. I'll go. Uh, that's going to be 63%. Go ahead and lock Ooh. that in. Ooh, I was going to say 68. Nice. Lock it in. Actually, no, 68. It's fine. Okay. The actual review is 71. Mm. Percent on Rotten Higher Tomatoes. I expect. Jordan Same. loses eight strokes there. He's down to 14. Doge loses only three and is down to 19. Our next movie will be Minions, The Rise of Gru. Zero. That's not my guess. Who started this last time? I Jordan? did. So Doge, Doge you go first this time. 61. I think we're getting a D minus on Minions, Rise of Gru. Um, 65. This ain't no Paddington. You know what I mean? Yeah. 70% minions, the rise of Gru. Jordan gets within one stroke of Doge. Jordan having nine left. Doge having 10. Mm. Mm. We move on to Pause of Fury. The legend of Hank. That name is really, really good, actually. The legend of Hank specifically is really great. Pause of Fury, the legend of Hank. Oof. Jordan coming up to the tee with his approach. Yeah, you know what? 74. Oh my God, I was going to say 75. I'll go 78. I'll really go 78 so you. that I'm not uh, Price is writing you. Jordan said 74. 74. I said 78. Said 78. This is going to be one of those where it's like it's 30 and Doge lost <laughs> because he went four it's over. It's 55%. Yeah. Okay. Doge ends at negative 13. Yeah. Jordan ends at, what did you say, Jordan? 74. 74. Be negative. Jordan ends at negative 10, 10. Yeah. and wins. Yeah. yeah. Winning in the last minute. I feel like that's how Jolf has gone a couple of times now. Where I'm doing okay. That's Jolf, I'm doing dude. okay. And then I'm like, I'm confident I'm going to go all the way and I'd take a big swing. Joff TM to end today's episode on that somber game of Joff. Yeah. I want you to give me a Marvel character that nobody is even looking for right now. Go on. That is going to show up in one of these announced faces. Can we just take mine from an old episode and just drop it in? Sure. (laughs) I'm Carter. Howard the Duck. He's oh, already wow. he's been there before. Oh, okay. No one's looking again. They were like, yeah. oh, it's a one-time tease with the collector, but he's gonna have a legitimate role in Guardians of the Galaxy 3. Surprise. I'm Doge. Uh the reason that there's all these empty spaces uh is because we're announcing a D23 as part of phase four, a surprise release. 
It's a movie we've already heard of. And it's going to be Fast 10. But joining Dom and his intrepid crew of vehicle drivers is going to be Ghost Rider. Oh, good. Wow. Played by Charlie Hunnam. Yeah, that's vroom, vroom. that's actually a pretty good cast. Awesome. I like that. He just to be Jax Teller again. It'd be beautiful. Yeah. But more like Jax Heller. Ooh, He's a scary skeleton. Ooh, uh, I'm Jordan. Big Wheel. It's Big Wheel. It's obviously Big Wheel. Who's Big Wheel? Oh, he's only the best Spider-Man villain of all time. Ask Jordan, <laughs> hey, ask Jordan what he has. Played by Paul Giamatti. Ask Jordan what he has. What does Big Wheel have, Jordan? Uh, I'm going to need Carter to ask before I can move forward. Will you ask him? Jordan, what does Big Wheel have? Got a big wheel. <laughs> hey, do you remember those things? Do you remember those things where it's like the the bendy metal track on a stick and you would like uh-huh. move it in the gyroscope and roll it? He just rides in one of those. He rides a big gyroscope. In the center of it and just crushes buildings. Throughout New York City. He's got a big wheel. He's got a big wheel. Just listens to Tina Turner the whole time. Yep. Yeah. Keeps on turning. You know? That's it. That sounds like a job for the new head of RV surgery. <laughs> Wait, are you promoting me? Congrats, Martinez. Doctor, that RV's flatlining. Well, that sounds like a job for the new head of nursing. So you're just promoting everyone now? Yeah, kind of looks that way, doesn't it? When your RV really needs saving, Progressive has you covered. See if you could save with a leader in RV insurance. Progressive Casualty Insurance Company and affiliates covered subject to policy terms.